so we can get started, please. All right. Okay, welcome to our 35th uh, uh, meetup uh, on the Bayer Network uh, Virtualization. We're very excited to have another meetup uh, this month. We have uh, two talks uh, today. I'm uh, Christos Colias with Orange and our office in Silicon uh, uh, Valley and in San Francisco in, uh, particularly. And I'm one of the uh, co-organizers for uh, this meetup. And uh, uh, before we get into the uh, uh, talk, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, and introduce uh, Wen Jing Chu. He's uh, with Dell and he's the host for this event tonight. Wen Jing, you want to say a few things? Oh, I do. Thank you, Christos. And uh, thanks to uh, Vikram for organizing this event. So I just want to, as a host, say welcome. And we're very happy to see so many uh, familiar faces in this uh, Tuesday evening. And uh, I'll just take the 30 minutes to talk about uh, what I do uh, in Dell, and then I'll let, uh, let you guys start get the, um, the presentation. So um, I work for Dell Research, and uh, you know we, we are based in, uh, right here in this location. And uh, Vikram and I are also working on areas called uh, high velocity cloud. So we look at areas, you know, what the future of cloud computing look like, and how can we use that for, for instance, uh, telecommunications, but also in the future IoTs. Uh, maybe more intelligent machine learning um, uh, to solve problems in those domains. And so that's what we do uh, during the day. And in the evening, we host uh, events like this. So I'm uh, very uh, happy to see you all. And uh, with that, I'm going to do that song. Yeah, so a few things before we go on here. No, I, I, I would think here, I guess. Okay. So. Uh, so this is again, this period has been going on for a little bit more than three years now, a very, very strong community. If you're interested in uh, presenting here at some point, let us know, Vikram and myself, you know, uh, our email address are like on the uh, Meetup uh, webpage. If you have a strong uh, uh, belief on, on, on a topic or you're passionate about something, feel free to re uh, reach out to us. And also, if you want to volunteer uh, or if you want to sponsor the event, we're always looking for sponsors, you know, either in terms of the food or the venue, or both, uh, the drinks, uh, you know, let us know. Uh, and with that, I think I'm going to introduce uh, Gal uh, Sagi with Huawei and the European Research Center out of uh, uh, Tel Aviv, uh, out of Israel, rather. And uh, he'll be talking about uh, containers. I see a lot of containers there, so I'm assuming that the talk is going to be about containers. And is anyone here from the Czech Republic? OK. Uh, you'll see why I'm asking, so Gal? Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, I was actually presenting at the OBS conference today and uh, Vikram uh, asked me to come and present to you this uh, project, so thanks for inviting me. Um, I had some problems with my computer, so this is the same slides that uh, we presented a few weeks ago in the uh, OpenStack Tokyo Summit. Uh, presented it with uh, Tony. Uh, we created the project together uh, and he will be here in his spirit. Uh, anyone uh, attended OpenStack Tokyo by any chance? No? Good. Anyone saw this presentation? Okay. Very good. Uh, so, we'll be surprised. Uh, Career is uh, basically, let's start with the name. Uh, we decided that uh, with this project, it's an open source project and we'll do everything open source and even the name picking, we did it on the OpenStack uh, mailing list. Uh, this is the name that was picked uh, by the community. Career is uh, Courier in uh, Czech. Um, okay, so before I'll start uh, talking about the uh, career itself, I want uh, to first introduce some problems that we uh, identify in uh, containers networking models today. Uh, what we uh, notice is that there are many new networking abstractions and models that are being reinvented over and over. Uh, we see it with the network, with Docker, with CoreOS, with Kubernetes, and so on. And most of these uh, new abstractions are uh, experimental and they are evolving. So they are changing and it's very hard to keep track uh, of things. Uh, Live network is very dynamic uh, if anyone is following the API. Uh, 
Uh, we also noticed that there are some new uh, solutions that are being implemented, which are vendor-specific and container-specific, like uh, Flanel, Weave, uh, Socket Plane, which is now part of Docker. Uh, and we also noticed that there are a lot of Neutron plugins that are, sorry, that are uh, trying to accommodate all of these new models, uh, trying to integrate them and trying to keep track but they are doing it separately. Each Neutron solution is doing it in its own repository. Uh, another common deployment model for containers today is in nested uh, containers inside VMs. It's done uh, inside tenant VMs, done mostly for security reason and isolation. Uh, and in this model, there is this problem that we call the, the double overlay problem. Uh, basically, we have network infrastructure that is connecting between these VMs, usually some sort of neutron backend. And we have another different solution inside the VM itself, uh, usually Flanel. Uh, and these two uh, solutions are needed in order to connect between uh, containers. Now, of course, this introduces problems of performance and latency because we are doing double encapsulation. Uh, but more than that, introduce problems of management because we now need to keep track and debug and troubleshoot two solutions in order to connect two containers in our environment. Uh, and it introduces other uh, problems which we are, you know, uh, usually we don't notice them at the start when we are only thinking about connectivity, but later when we are trying to do updates and upgrades and uh, high availability and all of these, uh, all of these background things uh, start to get complicated. Uh, we can see here an example of all of these uh, new solutions that are implemented for containers specifically. Uh, but when you come to think about it, uh, containers networking, uh, it's evolving and it's something new, but it's, there are a lot of similar concepts to VMs networking. Uh, and this uh, slide shows you uh, very well the problem that uh, I described as the double overlay problem. This is a common deployment in OpenStack today. Uh, you're familiar with Project Magnum? Anyone? So Project Magnum is an OpenStack project that is uh, exposing containers uh, orchestration engines like Kubernetes, Mesos, and Docker to the tenants, or tenant could deploy his environment inside VMs, okay? Uh, and the tenant will uh, deploy the containers nested inside these VMs, and he will have a networking uh, infrastructure for the containers, usually Flanel, uh, and then another networking uh, solution that is connecting, doing the networking for the VMs themselves. So again, the same problems that I mentioned previously, uh, double overlay problem, management problem, too much complication uh, for solving something that's supposed to be simpler. So all of this problem, uh, we decided to start the career, and career mission is, can be summarized to this uh, sentence. Basically, we identified that we already have uh, a networking abstraction which is uh, deployed, well tested, and uh, mature. And this is Neutron, OpenStack networking abstraction. Uh, and our mission in Korea is to map all of these containers, models, and all of these new abstractions to Neutron, uh, to leverage Neutron and its services. <coughs> So, uh, in order to do that, we, uh, we do mapping between these new uh, models. Uh, Docker, for example, they have their lib network. So, what we do is we map lib network uh, API to Neutron uh, API. And by doing this, we basically allow a vendor lock-free solution to containers networking, right? Because any Neutron plugin, any Neutron backend can now be used for uh, containers networking. Of course, that we also, by focusing this effort on uh, one place uh, in OpenStack, uh, we also can concentrate on testing, on 
being able to do uh, gate uh, checking, functional testing, and verifying uh, all of these environments. And this is a very, very important uh, thing to do uh, when all of these uh, containers models are changing and are still experimental. Uh, another trend that is happening uh, in Neutron uh, today is that there are many uh, new Neutron solutions that are tackling the problem of uh, nested containers. So basically we have, we have a few examples of this. We have OVN, if you heard about it, uh, Midonet, uh, Dragonflow, Project Calico. And all of these projects are uh, solving uh, the nested containers problem in a very uh, nice way. Uh, which is basically saying that we need only one infrastructure, both for the VMs networking and the containers inside those VMs. And we want to treat these containers, these nested containers, similar to the way we'll treat any other port in our system. Uh, this, of course, reduces all the management problems that I mentioned because we now have only one solution to debug and troubleshoot. Uh, it makes life simpler, and as I will show uh, on the next slides, it also improves the performance and latency because we can now save some encapsulation or some uh, unneeded things. And of course, by connecting containers uh, networking to Neutron, we uh, gain with zero effort all of the uh, Neutron uh, features that are non-existent in containers today, like uh, security group, uh, napping, and of course advanced <coughs> services like load balancing, VPN as a service, and firewall as a service. So, um, when we designed the career, uh, one of the main things that we wanted to make sure is that the deployment is very simple and very easy. Uh, so this shows you a simple uh, deployment of Career with Docker. We have the Docker daemon uh, and the Career. Career has a remote driver. If you know uh, Docker support pluggable drivers, so you can register a driver and it basically hijack uh, Docker APIs to implement the networking. What this uh, Career service is basically doing is mapping all of these APIs to Neutron APIs. So now we are uh, basically building uh, the network using Neutron on any uh, Neutron backend that is implemented. And uh, the nested container case, it looks a lot uh, similar, but it has a lot of issues in it, a lot of things that we are currently discussing. Um, where exactly career service should run should run in the VM, it should run in the computers, how it can communicate from the VM to the Neutron server. And these are things that are uh, evolving as we are uh, working on the project. Uh, but again, we are very trying to target into a simple, uh, simple deployment model. Question. Yeah. B, can you distinguish between uh, whether you are talking to a VM or whether you are talking to a container? So uh, I'll go over. Uh, I'll go over it uh, in the next slides exactly the nested container space. <coughs> so a little bit overview about the career. Career is open source. It's uh, we open source. It's part of uh, Neutron Big Stadium. Uh, we are doing everything the open stack way. There is a weekly IRC meeting where you can come and join and see. Uh, the progress and the discussion, we're doing things on the mailing list, using Launchpad, everything uh, that is needed. Uh, career, what I, show, what I will show in this uh, presentation is mostly about Dockers, but career mission is also to integrate with other models like uh, Kubernetes, Mesos, Docker Swarm. Uh, and we're working very closely with uh, the OpenStack community that is related to Containers. There are two main projects uh, if you're familiar with, uh, Magnum, which uh, I talked about, and Cola. Um, anyone familiar with Cola? Just. So the idea of Cola is to basically uh, provide OpenStack services as containers. So they are working on containerizing all the 
services that are building OpenStack. Uh, and we, we, are, uh, we want to use Koala to offer the Neutron plugins and the networking solution uh, containerized, so easy deployment for your networking. Uh, this slide basically shows uh, it's the review states, but it's from a few months ago. Uh, I think the important thing to take from this is that the community uh, that we are working on career is very diverse already, even that this is a very new project. Uh, and going forward, uh, I can tell you that in the summit itself, we, we met and talked with a lot of people. Uh, and this is basically a very common problem that people are facing. Uh, people want the flexibility of Neutron and OpenStack in their containers environment. Uh, and this is a project that is gaining a lot of uh, interest from the community and a lot of ideas that were brought up. Uh, so, so no more slides. <laughs> So while you're waiting, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. So uh, one of the things in Vancouver was discussing uh, Mac. You're too. Uh, is it microphone or let's see? Can you, can you guys or if you understand that? No, that's okay. Or unless uh, you can repeat the question, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there was discussion about uh, getting container as surplus objects and some kind of integration with Nova. Yeah. And where did it go? Well, there is. Uh, so you want to repeat the question? Yes. Yeah, so the question was: there was some discussion in uh, Vancouver about uh, integrating containers with Nova. Uh, there is a project called Nova Docker. I think that's what you mean. Uh, it's not. It was supposed to be Magnum that was going to make yeah. container as the first less objects. Yeah. So so Magnum is is gaining a lot of interest in the community. Uh, project Magnum is about. Uh, Deploying, what it does is you define this uh, object that's called base, uh, you give it to the tenant, and then that's basically an environment of the tenant to deploy, usually deploy uh, some sort of orchestration engine like Docker or Kubernetes, and this uh, makes sure to uh, deploy the containers okay, in the setup. So if there's no Nova being, uh, no Nova. Uh, any more questions before we continue? <coughs> so, quick question. Yeah. so I thought the container network model was CNN. It's like kind of parallel to the Neutron model. But here you mentioned it's a provider. Of so so it has the same abstractions like create network, attach endpoint. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's it's very similar. So it's a, a, yeah, sorry. So the question was about Lib Network being very similar to Neutron uh, model, and the, fit, the, the fact is that it is. It's you know networking abstraction is networking abstraction. There's no a lot of things you can do differently. And this is exactly what we spotted in Courier. So instead of you know introducing another abstraction and going over it, and it takes time for an abstraction to mature. We are mapping this to Neutron. So uh, there are, of course, some differences, and uh, there is there needs to be some sort of, for example, uh, Docker is supporting, is starting to support the uh, pluggable iPad right now. Neutron has it uh, from Liberty. So we are trying to uh, map between all of these uh, together and uh, do this integration. Uh, so, what I did, I described to you a uh, career, uh, the project, uh, the problems that we are trying to solve and how we are trying to solve them. I will uh, describe to you now the features that we have implemented for Liberty uh, in OpenStack. Uh, so, as I mentioned, the career support the pluggable uh, drivers. Uh, so, what we did is write our own career remote driver. Uh, it gets uh, Docker's API and translate them to Neutron. It's not the one-to-one -one translation, okay? There needs to be some uh, work here and uh, uh, adjustments. But uh, what we do is uh, basically by doing this uh, mapping, we allow for any Neutron 
plugins out there uh, to support containers network. And of course, uh, Docker uh, Neutron has many other features uh, for networking that can now be leveraged in your containers deployment. And it's all a matter of how you expose these features. Uh, in the career, we are trying to do all everything that is common inside career. Uh, but we, we did identify that there are some parts which are still dependent on the backend, on the neutron solution. One of them is how you bind the container to the networking infrastructure itself. Uh, and why is that? Because different solutions might have different uh, backends. For example, we could have an OBS bridge, we could have Linux bridge, or we could have uh, something else. And binding is different. And this is why we introduced a generic uh, VIF binding layer, which basically means that Courier does all the common binding and then transfer uh, everything that it does, uh, all the metadata, all the interface name, the namespace IDs, to a specific script. So each backend will have their own script, which implements the final binding uh, of the interface. Uh, and this is work that is also um, been done in uh, OpenStack generic with uh, binding uh, library. It's something that is also needed in uh, Nova from VMs. So it's something we are trying to work with the community to not duplicate code or effort. So as I was saying, uh, Courier does the, basically the IP and the uh, IP and uh, the Vethernet uh, creation, Vethernet pair creation, and then. The final binding from the network infrastructure to the container namespace is done by the specific uh, script according to the portal. Uh, deployment based, I touch it a bit. We are working on packaging career, and then again, we are trying to reduce complexity. Uh, and we are also working with uh, Project Cola to basically uh, provide Neutron plugins containerized. So uh, we have, for example, if you're using the reference implementation to anyone that is familiar with Neutron, we have the Neutron plugin, we have the layer 2 agent, the layer 3 agent, and so on. And we're working on containerizing them uh, with the career uh, for easy deployment. Okay. Um, so the, the nested deck containers, we are now back uh, to the problem, the double overlay problem. Uh, there are already solutions, as I mentioned in Neutron, that are tackling this uh, problem. Uh, one famous is OVN, if you heard about it, but there are also solutions from Dragonflow and Midonet. And the idea is to use the same uh, infrastructure, the same solution, both for the tenant VMs and the containers inside of these VMs. Um, and this reduces complexity in the management. Now, uh, the idea here is to treat the nested containers first, just like you would uh, treat any other port in our system. Basically, it's a neutron port. Okay, So you could do things that you can't do in containers uh, today. For example, connect a nested container with a uh, VM in the same logical neutron network. Uh, you could have isolation between the logical networks of the hosting VM and the containers inside these VMs. And you could, of course, um, uh, provide any neutron feature for these ports just as well. Uh, the way this is done, and again, this is um, in the summit, we, we got a lot of uh, response back that there are many, many different ideas how to implement it. There is the common uh, way where you do most of your computation on the computers. Uh, this is done in the OPN case. And then you have a very lightweight uh, tagging layer inside uh, the VM itself uh, to differentiate between the containers. But we also heard about other ideas like using the uh, IP VLAN uh, inside the VM um, and doing some uh, extended BPF to anyone that heard about it. Uh, for security policy inside the VM. So there are many, many ideas in this area how to provide, uh, how to reduce performance and latency problems here and how to provide a better management. And uh, 
career job in this area is to expose all of this in a common way to uh, neutral and to the users. So, um, career mission is to bridge between communities, right? Between the containers community and uh, between the OpenStack and Neutron community. And in order to do that, we also identify missing features in Neutron that are needed. Uh, for example, port forwarding. Uh, it's a feature that is not uh, currently supported in Neutron, and uh, it is needed for feature parity with uh, Docker port mapping. So this is something that we are also working in the community. Uh, we are working on adding tags to resource, the ability to add uh, tags to Neutron resource. This is done, there is a very uh, interesting use case. People are saying that deploying containers when done in scale is very slow because the API calls uh, takes time, the binding of the containers takes time. What we want to achieve here is to uh, create everything before, okay? well, so creating the networks, creating the, the ports, and only do the binding when it's needed okay? to save a lot of time. And in order to do that, we need to somehow manage it, and this uh, feature is supposed to help us. Uh, we are also working on formalizing the API to configure these nested containers. Uh, we are going to use the VLAN trunk API. Uh, in Neutron, which anyone familiar, it's very, very suitable for the use case. And other features like uh, DNS uh, resolution for DNS discovery of services and so on. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, con connecting containers networking to Neutron gets us all of Neutron features and abilities uh, with zero effort. And Neutron is something that keeps evolving, keeps improving. Uh, you can see here it's a big list uh, of features that are not there for containers now, for solutions now, like security groups, like netting, like quality of service, like the pluggable icon, which is just starting to become reality in Docker, uh, advanced services, load balancing, uh, which is used today in Kubernetes. You have a default load balancer. Uh, but think what you could do with a pluggable load balancer, uh, and many more as Neutron uh, progress. So our roadmap uh, going ahead uh, is basically what we already have implemented. So we have we have a setup working with Docker. We also already have it working with multi-node uh, Docker. So we have integration with Docker Swarm with Career. So you could. Uh, Neutron for your network uh, today with Docker. Uh, the generic VIF binding is already working for many, uh, for OVS, for Midonet, and so on, for OVN, of course. Uh, and we are uh, working on uh, functional testing. So going forward, we want to keep working on functional testing because we think uh, doing Making all of this stable is very important at this point because all of the changes that uh, live network is keep changing, it's still experimental mode and it's very uh, important when you integrate with it and both you uh, deploy it in production, of course, it's very important to, to see that things are not breaking. Uh, we are working on container, going to work on containerizing uh, Neutron plugins and the nested uh, VM uh, integration, integration with Project Magnum. Uh, and of course, all the missing Neutron features that uh, I talked about. And if we look uh, even further to the next release, and again, this depends on the, on the resource and the people that will work on this project, but uh, what we want is to integrate also with advanced services. So, for example, you could offer a Neutron LBUS to Kubernetes uh, service, so you will have a pluggable load balancer. Uh, and, of course, accommodate to all of the other networking models like Kubernetes and Mesos, CoreOS, and so on. Um, I have a little bit of problem connecting my computer, so Unfortunately, I will not be able to show you a demo. 
but you can watch it uh, online. You need to search OpenStack uh, presentation from uh, Tokyo. Okay, there is uh, this uh, talk that uh, we gave, and there is a demo there, basically demonstrating how you can uh, you can use Docker CLI or any kind of automation or management system that works with Docker. And what it does in the back end is use Neutron uh, to implement your network and change, uh, use any Neutron back end uh, that you want. Um, of course, as I mentioned, this is an open source project. Uh, we want people to join, uh, to join us, to, uh, to help everything you can, you know, comments, ideas, comments, complaints, uh, reviews. Uh, we are very welcoming. Um, as I said, we have a weekly IRC meeting. We have, we are talking on IRC. Um, there is a Trello board. It's tracking some of the tasks uh, done and some getting started blog post uh, about how to integrate with the uh, OVN and so on. And also, very good uh, documentation. Uh, so thank you. And, uh, Questions? Any questions from the audience? So, if you go, maybe you want to show the YouTube video there? You can connect to the uh, Dell guest uh, network. Maybe you can uh, show the. Uh, I think uh, you show the look uh, offline. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so, yeah. you, can, you can search it up and look. Um, I don't want to keep you waiting until I find it. No, that's okay. No, we have time. We can take questions in the way. Yeah, okay. So, any question? Did I answer about the nested containers? Uh, about the, so the Magnum residential containers that the. That's not going to make you. The roadmap for uh, compute side, how a container is going to be instantiated. Is it through Magnum or is it going to be through Nova? Yes, so um, there, there are two cases here uh, that we want to support. Uh, first, we want to integrate with Magnum. Uh, Magnum right now doesn't work on uh, bare metal, okay? So it works on nested containers and it deploys uh, the containers using uh, orchestration engine depending on what you do. So this will be the same, but the network will be implemented with Courier as the default driver. Okay, so you'll have uh, Kubernetes or Docker, uh, okay, that is deploying your containers, but the networking is implemented by Neutron. So the Kubernetes will be through Murano? How are they going to be? So, so the idea is uh, Kubernetes is something that we are going to look in the future, but if we look at Docker, for example, and you deploy a Docker Swarm environment, so you will have, in this environment, we'll have the Courier uh, driver, okay? And it will implement the network for the Docker. Docker will uh, fold the API to Courier. Courier will implement it with Neutron. And uh, OVN driver also. The, it doesn't need OVN driver. The idea here is that we are using official uh, neutral APIs. Okay, so OVN will work, uh, Calico will work, the reference implementation will work, Dragonflow, you can change any implementation, it will work because we are using a neutral abstraction. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? Mm -hmm. uh, is, that, is that the link you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Is that the one? I, mean, I don't know if there's anything that uh, that's a question. Yeah, okay. I guess we can speak up the microphone here. Maybe missing something, but what's the difference between this and um, Neutron with OVN driver? I'm, I'm struggling to find the, the, the differences. Well, if I were to use one versus the other. First, uh, OVN is one solution, right? OVN is not uh, Neutron or is not uh, OpenStack. The idea of OpenStack, uh, I could uh, very well answer you why. So why don't you deploy uh, OpenStack with only a VMware solution? Why do you need Neutron or OpenStack at all? Uh, the idea here is to give flexibility 
uh, and uh, to allow people, uh, you know, when you're using career, you're not just using OVN. OVN is one other option for many other options. Okay, so you could change and pick your best solution to your uh, environment. Now, OVN doesn't have all the neutron <coughs> features that you might want. For example, if you're now looking at advanced services and load balancing and firewall as a service and things that are not yet supported in OVN, right? So we are able to match and make uh, and take things uh, from where they can be found in Neutron. Uh, by using the Neutron API, you are basically saving, when you are working with OVN alone, then you are attached to OVN. When you are working with Career, you can work with OVN, but you can work with anything else as well. So I think uh, this gives you more flexibility in how you uh, deploy and configure things. So this is a YouTube video, right? Do you think there's any there you can show sort of back but like maybe five minutes if you can I don't know things like this is, the whole thing is forty minutes. So obviously uh, we don't have the whole thing, but if you can sort of like, you know, locate the uh, actual demo that might be uh, Yeah. So you see uh The idea here that we, uh, what's going to happen in this demo is that we're going to uh, start career service uh, and then uh, what it does, Docker uh, automatically discover this driver uh, and then uh, what we'll see in this demo is that uh, a network is uh, created and some containers are attached to this uh, network uh, using Docker CLI. Uh, what happens here in the back end is basically that uh, this, is, uh, this is a demo with a middle-net uh, solution, uh, for example. Uh, and what will happen in the background is that we'll see these APIs are sent to a uh, neutron, uh, and then the containers will get uh, IPs in the first uh, step. So you will see the containers in the open stacks. Yeah, so, so what this does basically because it uh, direct the API calls to Neutron so we can see the networks that are being created in OpenStack UI. Uh, we could see the ports, the containers themselves. We're also working on integrating with uh, Horizon so you could see the containers in your topology view. Uh, and you could apply them all the, all the features uh, that are done in, uh, in Neutron. Setup is on one laptop, basically. On your, on your, on your laptop, this demo. Yeah, this demo was. Uh, yeah, demo was on the local, uh, on the local uh, laptop. But uh, we already work uh, with uh, multi-node setups, right? So we can, uh, if you have a Docker Swarm uh, setup, uh, career would work. Here you can see the network is created by Docker, okay, and. Uh, Basically, you don't get it right first, but you need in, in Docker you need to specify the driver that you're using. Basically. If you have career, uh, you could use career or you could implement it in the default driver. So the network is created, and if we do a neutron, we will see. Uh, the network we're currently using the name uh, as, the, uh, as the Docker ID. It's not optimal. This is again another use case for the for the tags uh, feature that we're pushing in Neutron. So you will be able to use the the Docker name that you picked, and 
keep in the background an idea to keep the mapping between the neutron ID and the Docker network ID. So we have two databases here basically and we need to keep them synchronized. <coughs> By the way, again, to your question, for example, you know, integration with uh, Magnum and things like that, that uh, will not be supported uh, with Magnum and uh, no VM. So it's, uh, I think, uh, when you, of course, when you when you deploy an uh, environment that is not OpenStack, uh, there is no need for this. But when you're working in OpenStack or a mixed environment, it makes a lot of sense to use open stack abstraction than to pick one solution over the other because then you are tied in to the same same thing that open stack is, is meant to solve. So here we are uh, starting containers. You could uh, from Nib Network 1.9 you can run it in one command. Uh, there's no more service creation when one remember this public service. Uh, but here we are creating uh, we are creating the container and attaching it to a specific network. You could see that it got uh, an IP. Okay, it's an IP that is received from a neutron icon. <coughs> uh, we will soon we'll soon see another uh, another uh, container being uh, created on the same network and uh, ping between them. Uh, at this point, we, we answered some questions, but later on, we did uh, we added uh, neutron security groups to block these things. So we are basically leveraging a neutron feature uh, to block traffic between these two containers. I don't see that. Would even if we use OVN as an underlying option? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, OVN is, is one solution. Uh, there are many, many more solutions. And the idea is to integrate and expose uh, the capabilities of career, uh, for example, for the nested containers. It's something that needs to be formalized in neutral. How you uh, define it, how you configure it, it's not something uh, well defined, but with a career, we'll be able to do it uh, pretty easily. Now, there, are, of course, even in OVN, um, again, I'm not familiar with the exact details of how they did the integration, but even for OVN, for the nested the containers cases, you have some sort of how you communicate, for example, with the database from nested container, how you configure everything how it's working. So I think it's better to solve these problems as a community together where everyone are interested in this instead of going to one, one solution uh, over the other. So here we are, uh, basically what will happen is that uh, we had a ping, but we'll delete uh, one of the, secu the ICMP uh, security allow rule, and we'll see that uh, <coughs> So that's basically uh, the demo. Uh, any more questions? Any uh, questions? Uh, so basically, using nothing in your assets. Uh, do you see a real use case for uh, integrated container uh, inside the app? Do you see a real use case for a nested container inside the app? Because my understanding of container is for optimization and 
which VM does not provide. So will people run with a container inside a VM? Yeah, actually this is actually this is the more common deployment model. It's maybe surprising, but today uh, there is a very big problem with security. So you can't do multi-tenant containers on bare metal. So the only way to deploy it is in nested VMs. And that's actually from, again, this is from the feedback talking with people and you know people that are actually deploying this in production and using it for uh, pass uh, environments. This is actually the more, the more common deployment model. Sorry. I have a question looking at the, the demo. Uh, yeah. It seems that that thing has quite a bit of a time variation or zero. Is that simply the issue with the demo itself or, uh, this, or this, is that a real It's, uh, I think, the demo because uh, we're, we're in Tokyo time. and the uh, and, uh, <laughs> 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 Or Midonet. Anyone from Midokura? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don't worry, we're not going to tell them. Very good solution. Yeah. How much time does the Docker take to launch after the courier has been attached? Um, again, I'm, uh, I'm, I can tell you from the network perspective, it's, uh, you mean how much time it takes to do the binding? Not the binding, it's launching the core Docker. So this depends on, I don't know, your image, Docker itself. It's not, it's not something that is uh, dependent on career. Because Career is only responsible for the network binding. Uh, the APIs are very, very fast with Career. I haven't seen a problem on this. And we are working, uh, again, as I mentioned, one of the problem is that when you deploy scale environments that want to uh, like spin up to 1,000 containers, for example, then it does make, uh, there is some problem, it doesn't matter use with career or not with career to plug everything to the network. So we are trying to actually solve this by pre by being able to pre-allocate ports and networks and then only do the attachment which will be very fast. So um, do you have to launch a, for each and every VM uh, which is running uh, uh, containers, do you have to have a virtual switch for each and every VM, or uh, is it only on the bare metal? So, uh, I assume here you mean in OVM case, uh, because again, OVS is an implementation detail. Uh, some solution, as I mentioned, might not use OVS. Uh, we saw very nice, for example, uh, we saw very nice uh, implementation using IP VLAN uh, on the nested VMs, for example, and doing uh, routed networks, if anyone's familiar. Uh, but yes, in OVM case, you will have uh, the vSwitch uh, in the VM, but it's only doing uh, VLAN tagging. Okay. Okay, so it's, uh, All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So let's uh, thank the speaker. And uh, one more call for speaker round. Um, so Brian Stay from Intel, he's talking about the open uh, network platform. He's an architect with Intel, so uh, he'll be uh, doing his insight.